Hello everybody, we are here at the beginning of the new season of Death Battle with the first prediction of the year. And naturally they've chosen a nice, simple matchup that will take no time to talk about. And I'm joined here by, of course... Hello, it's me again. And if I sound different, it's because I'm kind of sick. But it's fine. I'm getting better. Yeah, and this is for Ant-Man versus the Atom. A nice, simple matchup that is not confusing at all. Uh, let's just say for this one, uh, we're in for a bit of a ride. For me, personally, this is not as easy as Scarlet Witch versus Zatanna, which is probably even worse for you guys, because I don't know what that implies, but... Well, I, mean, I guess we can try. They're probably thinking that, about the fact that you got that one wrong. Um, but I was right in my head, and I still think I'm right in my head. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. Like, I know there's still a lot of people who believe that episode was wrong, which is okay, yes. as long as you're not one of the people who goes accusing Death Battle and his researchers like an asshole, which Akil is not. So. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Whew, all right. Uh, um, where do you want to start? <laughs> I think it would be better off to start with the simple things here. Uh, so, Hank Pym is one of the founding members of the Avengers. He is... Usually when you think about Ant-Man, you don't exactly think of him as this super OP, powerful character. And for the most part, that's sort of how it's played out by Marvel Comics. It's like, you know, Ant-Man isn't this super big, powerful, herald tier character that goes around flying faster than light and blowing up planets. No, that's not what he looks like. But that doesn't really make him any less dangerous, per se, because he is the scientist supreme, as described by Eternity of all entities, not really people, but uh, that pretty much means he's one of the smartest beings in, like, not just on the Earth, but in the universe. And he has decades of feats to back up his intelligence level. He's up there in smarts with people like Reed Richards, Doctor Doom, uh, Tony Stark, Peter Parker, T'Challa, you know, all of those super genius characters, and he's created a lot of inventions. And of course, he's also the founder of the Pym Particles, which are what allow him to shrink and grow and, you know, manipulate his size, which is what he's sort of known for. And of course, it wouldn't be comics if he had like a level of speed and strength that literally doesn't make any sense because he's technically just a normal human but with those pim particles he can definitely alter his stats which we'll get into a bit later but just on a basic level we already know that he's been able to just early on react to attacks from thor and shrink out of the way of you know radioactive man's like blasts which are at least light speed so that's already pretty ridiculous and as far as strength goes he, it's there he doesn't really do anything notable except when he's like giant man which is when he increases his size and at that point he can just send characters like namor flying he's restrained the hulk he's restrained thor um and He's also been able to restrain Ultron and just sort of send a bunch of Ultron bots flying away, which is really impressive because these are characters with, you know, herald level feats that can easily just affect, you know, entire planets, stars, and even like on a higher level, they, they have like universal feats. So that is pretty impressive. Granted, we do have to remember that Hank isn't necessarily on par with them, and we've seen that considering he needed Hercules' help while restraining Thor. I mean, no, when he was restraining Hulk, he needed Hercules' help, and with Thor, Thor was still, you know, holding back, so that sort of does 
prove that Hank isn't necessarily on par with them, but given he has been able to tangle with Ultron, who's not as nice as Bruce or Thor, it's pretty good. Uh, and stats aside, Ant-Man does have a variety of abilities and like, uh, various pieces of technology in his arsenal to help him out with whoever he's fighting and that's sort of where all the crazy stuff starts to come in and i think do you want to cover adam's stats as well before yeah, sure. moving on it, it is important to, uh, I, yeah. I guess i should be clear i'm pretty sure death battle have confirmed it is hank pym and ray palmer i know pe- i know that some people have been confused thinking that it would be scott lang um but no definitely yeah. not that, that would it's- be silly to do <laughs> Scott is pretty interesting in his own right, but Hank and Ray is where most of the stuff is, and yeah, a lot of it so is scalable backwards, so if Hank can do it, Scott could technically do it, and uh, if Ray could do it, uh, Ryan could also theoretically do it, or vice versa, but I mean, there's like a few exceptions, but that, I guess, sort of just comes with these guys being the originals, which could give them a few things that the later, you know, counterparts don't really have. And yeah. Well, Though, I mean, no, no, no one was thinking that it would be Ryan, Adam. No one thought that. <laughs> yeah, Ryan's just not popular enough. I mean, look, look at how he gets Which... done in adaptations. I think the most notable, yeah. aside from Injustice 2, I don't know if I've ever seen him in an adaptation as the Adam. He's just some guy. I didn't even know Ryan existed until Injustice 2. Really? And I thought, I thought that was going to be Ray, and then I was like, that's not Ray. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, R- Ryan, like, I knew who Ryan was, but he's like, a guy who is sometimes the Atom, but I don't care. That's not the Atom to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's no uh, one thinking it would be, it would be Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's it. It would be best if it was Ray or uh, you know, Hank. And Scott has a bit more clout, but it it would still be weird to do like Scott versus Ray. It yeah, that'd be, like... be it'd be strange. Like that, that I, I don't know yeah. why you would do that. Like what? Yeah. You, you just do Scott versus Ryan, and at that point, yeah. just do Hank versus Ray. That's the rivalry. Yeah. If you really want Ant Man versus Adam too, I guess they could do. Scott versus uh, Ryan, but that would be. I mean, I guess that would depend on how this goes. I mean, just, and just, if that just really do, changes. Just do um, yeah. Wasp versus Bumblebee. I know that um, wa- like only yeah. Wasp, only Wasp really matches her counterpart. Yeah. but still. And but, Wasp Wasp versus Bumblebee would make a lot of sense, and I know quite a few people who want that, but. You know, how many I mean, pe- that could work. How many people want it for the matchup as opposed to people who want it because they like Wasp? Wasp actually has quite a few fans. Yeah, like, Bumblebee. Yeah, people love Wasp. Not so much. People yeah, would just want to see Wasp like on Death Wasp. Wasp. Yeah. I wonder how many of them. Uh, I wonder how many of them want it because of um, EMH. <laughs> pretty much everyone. I don't pretty think people everyone. really care about <laughs> Jenna outside of that. Yeah, she's great in that like, show, but, like, outside of it, yeah. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. She's actually really powerful in the comics, which actually is relevant to this, so I guess we can go over a I bit I imagine her Hank, because... Hank would scale to Wasp, right? Yeah. Before going into her, though, we should probably talk about Ray a bit. <laughs> yeah. The basis uh, of how he works. Ray Palmer is also one of the smartest characters in the DC universe. Um on par with whoever you consider to be on that level in DC, which, you know, there's characters like Lex, Batman, uh, Mr. Terrific, a few others, you know, and Ray is... DC's big brains are not nearly as pronounced as Marvel's. I mean, other than, you know, uh, Batman and Lex, they're not as well-known, but they're still... There's still quite a few in DC. I mean, the main character I think of when I think about intelligence in DC would be Brainiac, but, you know, he's he's a bit higher up there 
and then there's also Constantine, but he's not really. There's a very different you know, kind smart, of intelligence. The same. He's a different kind of intelligent. Uh, and as far as Adam's powers go, he actually gets them from white dwarf matter, which is you know just material in DC, and that's like since he's powered by that, it's. It basically he channels it into a into his bio belt, and that is sort of how his powers work, pretty much. And he can use these powers to manipulate his density. I mean, other than shrinking, he can manipulate his density to essentially stay the same at various sizes, which can cause him to hit a lot harder than you know, you would expect a regular human to hit. And, um, that's just like a super oversimpli- like, just a really big oversimplification of how his powers work. But, stats-wise, he can... He can tangle with the best of the best when he really pushes his, uh, matter or density manipulation. And he can, you know, just sort of completely pulverize street tier characters and send them just flying everywhere. And he can also hurt Herald tier characters like Hawkman as a Black Lantern. And he's done this to also, you know, send higher level characters flying around. And he's actually knocked out Black Lantern Hawkman's tooth, which is pretty good because Hawkman even in a regular state, is able to tangle with characters like a suppressed Superman and other DC high tiers like, I believe, Black Adam at one point. And he's also able to keep up with them in speed, at least to a certain extent, and he's been able to shrink fast enough to avoid blows from Martian Manhunter and Hawkman. And there's also this really wild scan where Adam is sort of implied to be the second fastest member of the Justice League, which I'm gonna be honest, I don't really buy that. Because, oh yeah, I did read that. That confused me so much. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think people sort of imply that because uh, I don't know, maybe because he can like sh travel through telephone lines. Yeah, but... like uh, it, it says that um, he's the he's the second one on the scene because he goes through the web and cell phones which okay <laughs> i'm pretty sure that that's not that fast compared to some of the justice league yeah when you have superman and wonder woman and green lantern their feats it's like uh maybe rethink that statement but i get what they were trying to do there yeah uh adam is really fast and technically, with his density manipulation, his durability should reach similar levels, I guess, if he manipulates his density. I don't really think stats are too big of a factor in this fight, but if they were, <coughs> people are sort of like... I don't know. I, I think it would I think be it's safe fair to say that they're probably even, if with equal leeway. I think, yeah, with equal leeway, they might be rather similar in stats. Uh. I actually just had a thought. If Adam was using the Watchtower and its technology to go, and like going through that and the speed the Watchtower can calculate at, and somehow converting that to movement speed, would that make him among the second, among the fastest at that point? Because the Watchtower I don't does know. transmit things very quickly. Actually, no, that wouldn't even make any sense because... Characters like Wonder Woman have literally flown fast enough to, like, almost break into the speed force. That's true. So, yeah. I don't... Wonder, uh, that, Wonder that, Woman, that, yeah. Green Lantern, um... Superman. Superman, of course. Yeah. Yeah, I don't... I think speed-wise, I think it's probably safer to say that Adam has better statements, but... But those, sta those statements are stupid, so we can ignore them. Yeah, I, th I think <laughs> I think if we do take the statements into account, 
Adam would technically be better, but at the same time, Ant-Man is... I think if we look at them one-on-one, -on -one, hypothetically, just looking at them like Ant-Man is Giant-Man, he would have better strength, but then Adam, when he shrinks small enough, he has better speed statements, but then that would still be kind of weird to look into, because, you know, one is bigger, one is smaller. Mm. I guess and, that, that does bring up the question stat-wise. Um, if they're both shrunk, how strong is Ant-Man? Because Adam, theoretically, would not... His strength would not change when he shrinks at all. But no, he, if anything, Adam could maybe make his strength... Like, he can increase his strength, perhaps? Which also doesn't really make any sense, but it's DC, so... Of course it doesn't make sense. They're using yeah. magical bullshit particles to shrink in the first place, so... Yeah. <laughs> But if Ant-Man's big strength feats come when he's giant, how strong is he when he shrinks? Would he be weaker well, than Adam if they Ultron, he was in underspace. Never mind, okay. Which... <laughs> well, that's the weird part. He was still bigger than Ultron. He was like giant man in underspace, but that would still be smaller than subatomic sizes. So Ultron would just be even smaller. But Ultron would still be Ultron. Yeah, Ultron would still be really fucking strong. Yeah. It... Uh, I guess this sort of moves on to the one of the weird, like, purposes of the Pym Particles, or not really purposes, but one of the... one of the fundamental, like, attributes of the Pym Particles, which tells you that Pym Particles have three different axes, uh, the x-axis is strength, or no, the x-axis is size, the y-axis is durability, and the z-axis is strength. Which means that, theoretically speaking, you can alter your strength, your durability, and your size with Pym Particles, which is why Vision can, like, alter his strength and his durability, whereas... Wonder Man can alter his, you know, just, like, overall strength and durability, his his power, and Ant-Man is more or less limited to his size changing, but then if you look at the feats, he can also sort of alter his other attributes, so then it sort of becomes, to what level can Hank fall back on this? Because if you want to look at scaling to Vision and Wonder Man, those two are incredibly strong like they should they have far better direct feats than adam has and it's not really close because those two are just straight up herald to your characters well, yeah well, and makes sense pretty strong ones feats. at that yeah but this this like fundamental uh idea that the pym particles can control strength durability and size scott lang was the one that actually found this out it wasn't Hank Pym that was able to discover this. But to some degree, I do think Hank can fall back on this and manipulate it. Which, if you look at it, it would technically be telling you that Scott Lang could uh, sort of do the exact same thing that Ray Palmer can with his, uh, you know, strength and durability and just density manipulation as a whole. Which then brings up the question, if Hank can do it, he should pretty much be able to just do whatever Adam does, and it would just fully, like, cancel out. And if he can't, then maybe you could say Adam has a bit more, like, leeway with strength and durability, but speed would still be sort of weird to look at, you know, considering neither can really, neither really has this traditional super speed per se mm. so we'll just happily say that feet like physically stat wise just accept them most likely they're gonna be placed at a similar level in the episode so yeah and i don't think they're really going to be called out on their stats too much i do think they're just going to be placed at vaguely so or so level i don't really think they're gonna I... I think strength could be brought would probably be brought up specifically because it is a pretty big thing 
that Ant Man can become giant and that Adam can yeah. make himself dense as fuck. Um, yeah. They'll probably go with, like, bring those up a decent bit. They'll mention speed offhandedly, like, oh, we can dodge lasers. Um, and then the sidebar reacted to this guy who's fast as fuck. Um, don't know I about think, durability. I think for Adam, they're definitely going to bring up uh, that one scan with the second fastest Justice League member or whatever, because just for, like, even... I think they could just bring it up and then Wiz is like, that makes no sense. We're just going to scrap that. Like, they could do that. Because literally, Death Battle has brought up numerous speed feats that would just sort of make literally no sense if you Thank literally you. bought that statement. Because they've brought up absurd speed feats from Martian Manhunter, Wonder Woman, Thor. Or not, yeah. I mean, it's not really important for Marvel, I guess. So just Superman, Wonder Woman. Flash, Doctor Fate. So. Yeah, I mean, admittedly, Flash would be kind of irrelevant because the scan does outright say Flash is faster anyway, but yeah. Yeah. yeah you're absolutely correct. So it, it would yes. be... Uh, Arsenal and Hacks is where the argument would be. Yeah. And... Ooh, where do we even start? I guess... The main thing that Ant-Man has, which is in his name, would be his gigantic ant army, he can talk to ants due to his helmet, which allows him to communicate with and command ants. Uh, and they're actually really obedient to him, so like, you know, that's pretty cool. And since he can use pin particles on those ants, he could also theoretically mess with their stats, make them a lot stronger than a regular ant would be, and he has done that, because obviously, even if Marvel didn't really think it out, he has used ants on more powerful characters, and they have been rather effective. So that alone could be a problem for Adam, because that would just mean a huge numbers advantage with all of them coming at him. Uh... The Ant-Man helmet can also block brain signals, which I do feel like this is pretty important, because if it can mess with your brain, then I don't necessarily know how big of a defense Adam has against it, but Ant-Man has been... he's used it to uh, mess with the language center of Quicksilver's brain while Cthone was possessing him. And Cthone is the guy that gave Scarlet Witch his powers. And what else has he done? He's also messed with Swarm's control over bees, so he can definitely impact uh, other people's, you know, brain signals. And he's specifically, it was used against Swarm to block his signal, which is supposed to control bees. So, yeah, it's... It can definitely mess with your mind, to say the least. And he can, of course, like I said before, he can shrink and grow his ants to whatever size he sort of pleases. And I guess a lot of the important stuff comes down to how small he can go and how big he can go. And let's just say that Ant-Man can shrink as small as an ant that's given, but he can also shrink down to the size of an atom. He can shrink to subatomic sizes, and then he can go even smaller than that. Because in Marvel, you have various universes, various realms, various cosmological places that are really, really, really cosmic in nature, and that makes them both small and big at the same time. Which literally makes no sense, but that's when you sort of get to the true extent that they can shrink or grow to. And do you want to go over that a bit later, or just go through that in the hacks section? Um, I think we can talk about how much both can shrink later, and just focus okay, on yeah. overall stuff here. Like, I'm looking at the document... Um, yeah. 
So, Hank just has something that always gives him the tool he needs most? Explain, yeah. please. <laughs> Hank has this thing called the Toolbot, which has the top 900 tools he uses, or he might need in, like, a general situation, which, if it's 900 tools, I think it's a bit more than just generalized, because, uh, I sent Nemesis these scans, because I don't really know what he did, I was trying to process it, but it looks like he messes with Reed Richards' time manipulation, which is definitely not something a normal person would carry on them. Because mm-hmm. that seems like more of a Batman, oh, I'm always ready for blah 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 situation. Okay, hold on, let, let me get these which, open. <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna look at these. In the t- this is my Zeno room. What's that? What's... Well, Reed's just like, this is my Zeno room. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, uh, his little... Uh, pin pocket? Oh, that no. explains it. Oh, no, 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 you're talking about Reed, yeah. He, it, I, I think it's like a time paradox room thingy. It's like, he's like reversing time on Hank, it looks like, to like teleport him back five seconds. Or however many seconds. I can't really tell. It's something like that. It's it's Reed Richards. He always has something stupid. But yeah, the toolbot, as we were talking about, it it's something that he can just shrink or grow whenever he needs because it's always on him. Or I guess he grows it because it's always smaller than him. And it contains all the tools that he might ever logically need. And it has a smart chip that sort of functions as like this AI thing that just knows what to give him in whatever situation, I guess. Sort of like the Omnitrix, but it's Hank's, and he can just get whatever tool he needs. Uh, and okay. he has he has a lot. He has a lot. So that, that moment with Reed, it looks like what he's done is he's brought out a device that I guess mimics Reed's voice so that it can reach Reed by bypassing the defenses of Reed's room. So he's just... Time manipulation thingy. Got a voice mimic thing that works regardless of how time is affected around it. And... Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Something like... Sure. Yeah, why not? Something like that. Why is he shaped Uh, like a box with a box attached to it? (laughs) Here's the thing with me... I can understand magic, but I don't understand science. So, there you go. This if is... Dormammu vs. Trigon ever happens, I'll be on here and I will be able to explain everything. This stuff does not make sense to me. This is... yeah. Oh yeah, Bang actually You're thinks... You're better off with ba- literally uh, Bang, anyone. Bang thinks based on the cipher that um, Dormammu Trigon's happening. He thinks the pentagram combined with the um, clue about pantheons and destruction uh, hints towards Trigon Dormammu. I think it's possible, but I also think it might be a Constantine versus Radau or a Ghost Rider versus Spawn. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think it's probably one of those, but it, it could be Dormammu Trigon. It could be. Yeah. Which... Well, Bang is going to be back for that one, which is going to be great, because... Yeah, no, that one was still my favorite prediction. Iron Man versus Batman. Favorite prediction to date. Yeah, that, that was pretty fun. Long. Yeah. <laughs> Very long. Uh, Let's see. What else can Ant-Man do? He can do a lot. Uh... He has ants that can control the weather, because, of course, that makes sense. Uh, these ants can cause heavy, heavy rain, which, you know, it's fine. These are robotic ants, I should mention that. These aren't just magic ants, they are robotic them. ants that can, you know, cause rainstorms, which is delightful, I'm sure that would you be know, really that's, helpful. This, that's not even the first time... 
that <laughs> I've seen weather controlling animals. When was the first time? I don't remember the first time, but the last time. There's this show called Zoo, um, and the second season, I think it was the second season, I think it's Zoo, is all about animals that just change the environment. I think it's a jellyfish that, can, that like, makes tornadoes because of course it can do that. Why wouldn't it? Yeah. That, There's, like, an earthquake-causing sounds- sloth as well, I believe. They could have picked any animal and they had to pick a sloth. I mean, I guess it's good because a sloth is very slow, and if it was, like, a cheetah, you'd have, like, just earthquakes all the time. What about, like, a kangaroo? Uh, I mean, they jump a lot. (laughs) There would be earthquakes all the time. Yeah. Just every time it jumps, there would be. That would just suck. And, you know, kangas are great, but they're not really good um, with downhill terrain, so there's always a chance it might make an earthquake, which shifts the terrain, and then just fall on its face. And then that would cause another earthquake. <laughs> that would cause another earthquake, yeah. <laughs> uh, so this, this is actually, like, looking, looking o- over things, this is probably the least unusual thing so far. Probably, because he also has an image inducer, which just creates holog- well, not really a holograms, but like sort of like illusions that the way he used it, he used it to make him look like an ant, and he also used it to make an ant look like him, which was able to trick, uh, I think the first time he used it, he, he was able to like, did he trick Reed Richards? I think, yeah, I think he temporarily might have tricked Reed. But the second time, when he used it on Ultron, it, like, definitively tricked Ultron into thinking that he, like, it was actually Hank, but it was just a random ant. So does it make mass? No, I think it just projects, like, an illusion. Did he not even think of, like, touching (laughs) Hank? I actually... I think he did touch Hank, but, like... Yeah, it just confused everything and everyone. Like, it confused Ultron, and Ultron's sensors are just absolutely absurd, so... Ugh. Yeah, it's a lot. Um, He can use masking technology on ants to sort of, like, hide them, in a sense. And that's pretty powerful because i think if adam doesn't realize that there's like an army of ants coming towards him that might be a bit you know dangerous if they like got a hold of him just an army of invisible ants (laughs) i don't i don't really even think they're invisible they're just like sort of they're like partly invisible because if you look at the scan reed says that they have masking technology on them but like you can still see the ants you just like, wh- what? Like, I don't understand what the purpose of this is. I guess it's just something he can do. He can yeah, I mean... Like, eh. I was gonna say that they could just be visible for our purpose, but Reed is, like, looking right at it. <laughs> He's just yeah. looking dead at the end. And I feel like, if anything, the, the glowing light would just make them more <laughs> visible than normal. I guess not. <laughs> that might as well be what what happens, sure. Oh, did you know Reed recently got a feat where he stretches so, like, quickly that he stretches faster than time and into the fourth dimension? That might as well have happened, sure. I didn't know that. Yeah, he did that. It's cool. Look, the last comic I read, um explain the spider sense as being connected to a multiversal web so yes i'm kind that of that is also true. <laughs> that's uh, also true like why like something bad happens and then like every spider-man realizes it because 
oh, it's affecting the multiversal web connected to every Spider-Man that ever has, will, or could exist. Except the dead ones. Just, it's just Marvel. Fucking multiverse I mean, spider sense. <laughs> if, if Batman has a bat god, I think it's fair for Spider-Man to have a spider god. Right, yeah, what? <laughs> I don't even want to question that one. Yeah. I mean, we can't, we, we can't, like, you know, we can't just let the street tier characters be street tier characters. We have to, we have to make them all gods. Otherwise, it makes no sense. Now I'm just thinking of, it's like, too- the, the 1 million BC Iron Fist, who's just, like, they're tangling with Celestials with all the oh, other Avengers. Oh, yeah, that one. That, yeah. that whole BC Avengers, I still don't like it. If nothing makes sense. I don't think that... anyone likes. I don't think anyone likes it. Like, there's an Iron Fist that predates the Dragon, and there's a Black Panther that predates the Meteor. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Who? <laughs> I think with Black Panther, as long as you sort of have Bass, you're just sort of always, you know. And you know, I'm pretty sure I remember reading yeah. that the the oldest Star Brand was like 500 years old. But now, now there's one that's a, a T-Rex, so fuck that, I yeah. guess. Who cares about anything anymore? I'm pretty sure... Wait, no, was it a star brand? Yeah, no, I think one of the first... Or maybe it was the second star brand? That was, like, a caveman dude? Is that the BC one? Yeah, he. Yeah, I thought that was Red Hulk at first, and then I like went back in time, or not back in time. I didn't go back in time. I went to like the Jason Aaron run, and I like read it, and I think it was like two cavemen that were like exiled because they were like they were like I think they were exiled from their tribe because they were like gay or something, and then one of the cavemen died. And then the other one was sad, and then he just got hit by the star brand that just was like flying through the multiverse, and then it just <laughs> flew to Earth through like it like punched a hole in the superflow, and just landed on Earth, and then it like hit him. That was I think. lucky. I mean, now he has, now he can probably bring his lover back to life. I mean, he could. He doesn't it's do the that, star does he? Brand. I don't think he does that. I, I, I would do that. If that was me, I would have... Yeah, would that would make do sense it. to do. That would have probably been the first thing I would do, which is probably why I haven't been hit by any magic, multiverse, traversing meteor, cosmic power thingies, because I would... I would not... I would use the power in interesting ways. And then I got, I, I got a question. The, the reveal yes. that, like, Thor... Like, because of the BC thing, we're going on right down a rabbit hole here. Thor's just got a chunk of the Phoenix Force in his body just forever. He so, does. How is it that back during when he was, like, in the like the Donald Blake stuff, he lost his powers with not having Mjolnir, but he still had a, a piece of Phoenix Force in him? Did, did, he, did, did he just not notice... The chunk I, of infinite power in him? Well, the thing with the Phoenix is the only reason Thor has a potent, like, a portion of, like, the Phoenix power is because he died the day he was born and then the Phoenix brought yeah, him like, back Yeah, like, Laufey killed him. How and then, did Odin just yeah, let him walk then, in? And then Phoenix brought him back to life, which was a super dumb retcon, because, like, Originally, Odin was, like, the coolest dad ever, and then in that run, he was just, like, a drunk al- alcoholic that was just like, oh no, my son is being born, whatever shall I do? It's so Like, dumb. why is... Why he has the most powerful, like, entities in the multiverse as, like, the first roster of like the avengers and you're telling me that you can't protect a baby thor is there a reason he's using mjolnir as well like is gungnir just not around i i don't even know because if i look back i feel like mjolnir was made after thor was born some point 
but like Thor is all I think Thor has always been millions and millions of years old but like somehow that also ties into the Ragnarok cycle which sort of reincarnates them and they're also from Asgard which is beyond time and space so technically their age should not have a number like they should not have a numbered age I think they would just be alive seriously if they wanted caveman avengers why didn't they just make it another alternate universe like the like the wild west uh marvel or the medieval marvel or the dinosaur honestly they could, they could have done that it would have made logical sense it's upsetting <laughs> it's it's jason aaron we'll just blame it on him fair enough so ant-man then it looks like the last things in his arsenal section are wasps goggles and an EMP gun. Yeah, uh, he has a lot more technology. This is like an extremely like vague overview. Yeah, I don't even want to know how much of the 900 in that toolbot has been shown. I'm sure a lot over the course of what, 40 years, 50 years, 60 years, however long Hank has been alive. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, I guess we didn't go over this, but Hank has an artificial lab within a PIM pocket, which is a shrunken down slice of space-time. So he kind of has his own lab that he can shrink with its own space and time. Mm. Ooh, do you, so, think, do you think that's the lab they showed in the um, trailer? Like, with, where the fight starts? Do you think that could be that lab? That might just be in, like, Hank's little anthill or or is that just like an emh thing miscellaneous heroes it might not be but i don't know that could have that could be an avengers tower that could be anywhere yeah i was just thinking how how like cool would it be if like they reveal midway through the fight that the whole time they were already shrunken down in that pocket that, yeah that would be cool that'd be such a and cool then, reveal adam also has his own lab that he can just sort of shrink but it's not really like its own mini space time, but That's it's still good because they can sort of. Segue. <laughs> yeah. It's fantastic. Because I think we have to get to the wasp goggles a bit later because it's part of like the wasp suit that Hank also has. And because he's been wasp, he's been yellow jacket, he's been giant man, he's been Goliath, he's been. A lot of different identities but for adam his hacks is basically he can shrink really really small and his superpowers of being able to maintain uh, maintain the same like weight while shrinking and you know manipulating his density he can obviously do a lot of those which we'll go into a bit after this when we talk about how small they can actually shrink but as far as his arsenal goes, he can, he has a shrink ray that can cause things to explode after shrinking them, and he can also manipulate the size, like, of other people, and he can, like, very specifically manipulate specific parts of their body, so he can, like, mess with your head and grow your head and then shrink the rest of your body. So he can basically distort your body in a fight, which... Can, which can be pretty painful if he decides to be creative with it. And considering he's one of the smartest people in the DC universe, I think he can definitely do that to Hank, which would be a pretty gruesome way to die. That'd be a pretty cool kill, though. Like it would be animation. a cool kill. But I think we both know what the kill is most likely going to be. I, I mean, I, I hope it's not... <laughs> I th I feel like that's literally what it's gonna be. It's there's like it's I feel like it's a ninety percent chance that the kill is gonna be what we're all thinking the kill is gonna be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, they're all thinking it. We don't even need to say it. Like you either know or you don't, <laughs> and like you're better off not. And if you don't know, it. too bad. <laughs> you're better off. Yeah, you're better off. I guess, guys, can Hank with pin particles like undo it if a part of him is shrunk? Like, has he ever shrunk just bits of him, but not the whole him or grown? I actually don't know. Because that feels like something that he wouldn't 
have shown to do himself, because that doesn't seem super helpful. Just get a, like, a big quagmire arm for, like, I don't know. Yeah. But, yeah. I, I can see it would have been something he might have done to something else at some point in his history. Yeah. Yeah. And, of course, uh, Ray's bio belt, where he gets his powers from, uh, he can teleport. It has a teleporter inside of it. That would have been a much better explanation for how he's the second member of the Justice League to any scene. <laughs> yeah, but apparently it's because of telephone lines. Cause... Yeah, he just goes through the telephone lines, sure. Wait, okay, here's a question. Hank, Yeah. he has that signal thing that messes with the brain. Could Adam just shrink into the signal and get into the helmet that way? Yeah, he could probably ride the signal. So that, Honestly. That, that, maybe he can't stop if it or can't change it if it does affect him, but he could bypass it altogether. Yeah. So that that could be an interesting counter to that, I but guess. I think Hank's helmet has also been shown to like block out telepathic signals, so it might not be able to Well, if we look at it that way, technically speaking, Hank should just be able to uh or not Hank Ray should be able to shrink between the atoms of the helmet and into the helmet itself. Right, yeah, and then obviously the counter there is that Hank would just shrink at the same rate and make that impossible, so, yeah. And he could also just shrink into Adam's suit. Yeah, they could just, they could they could do that, so. I guess it doesn't matter, it's more just a matter of uh, Ray could avoid the, the brain fucking yeah. through the one yeah. thing he does all the time. Yeah. It's... It's complicated stuff. Uh, and Adam also has scanners that can detect disruptions in the quantum barrier and apparently also disruptions in the nanostructure of timelines. I didn't know timelines had specific physical structures, but apparently DC has this thing where it does that because apparently someone's been Captain Adam, not Ray Palmer, but Captain Adam, different character has been able to matter manipulate speed force energy which shouldn't have matter so don't exactly know how that happened but it's a thing with the dc uh you know whatever adam also has a size ch changing ship which i didn't put down in this uh dock for ant-man but he also has multiple ships that can change size like i was actually reading a comic earlier this morning for the g1 blog which is going to be way better than the prediction because that's actually going to have most of the stuff but uh i believe he was able to shrink a ship down into like a hand bracelet that was able to like trick hera you know the goddess of happy marriages totally it's Let's call her the goddess of irony, because that's pretty much what she is. But, yeah. Hera's pretty strong in Marvel, so that's pretty cool. Where are Hawkman's wings? Um, who did what to Hawkman's wings? Where are Hawkman's wings? In that... In the link to the scan with the ship. Where are his wings? Am I just not seeing them? I also don't see them. Huh. And what is with the ship? What is that design? It's got a giant ball on, in front of it. <laughs> I I actually don't even know. It's... Yeah, it's a weird ship. Do you want to see the Ant-Man ship? Yeah, sure. Why not? Well, why there's not? actually sure, two sure of this, them. I'm sure this will look normal and sensible. You know. Uh, one of them is literally shaped like an ant. Why isn't? Why don't we have Ant-Man versus fucking Seto Kaiba, then? a ship with the most impractical design possible. Why? Oh yeah, Ant-Man also rides ants. Yeah, I mean, that one makes Where? sense. Some ants can fly. That, that that would be fairly helpful. Yeah. Oh yeah, Adam has various ships, and I'm pretty sure one of them can mess with your brain. Which, you know, uh, both of them should hypothetically be able to do, but they can mess with your internal organs if they shrink well enough. Uh... So from, Where from what I'm gathering with this, the, the big thing that they have that the other doesn't 
Hank has a huge numbers advantage. And that's... That's basically it. And Ray has a gun. And can teleport. And that's basically it. Well, there's actually the one major advantage that... Well, it's actually not as major, which I'll get into in a bit. But it could, if used in the right way, it could definitely be a game changer. Ray actually cannot grow past his normal size, traditionally. Right, yeah, it was only in, um, what was it, zero hour that he could do that. Yeah, I think so. Whereas Hank can, uh, Hank can grow, and not just giant man big, which should be pretty obvious, but he can, uh, I think, I think this is the neat way to transition to, uh, how much they you know, this. how crazy their shrinking can get. Yeah. Um, I think we all know that they can shrink to the size of an atom or even smaller, you know, to the size of electrons or whatever. But I think this is a good time to get into cosmology because, uh, yeah, of course, because that's, it's... that's, have, have we gone one of yeah. these? Marvel DCs without bringing up cosmology I'm trying to remember I we have not yeah I don't think we have or just well Marvel. Thor versus Vegeta we didn't need to but since he had the Odin force at the time I think we might have brought it up yeah we probably did bring it up as like and if you give Thor the Odin force you're a dickhead <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna be honest if looking at what could possibly be the remaining, uh, you know, Marvel versus DC fights this season? I think we're gonna have to go into cosmology again because if it's Ghost Rider versus Spawn, yeah, with Zarathos, it's going to be necessary. With Zarathos, it's necessary. Uh, Dormammu versus Trigon is obviously. And Swamp Thing versus Man Thing, no shit. That that. That for if we if that happens, I'm gonna need Bang and I'm gonna need like Well, I'm gonna need Bang. I, I don't want anyone else but Bang. It's just gonna be us <laughs> three. I'm sorry. I'm I'm kicking everyone out. It's just gonna before, be you two and... screaming at each other and I'm just here thinking, eh, sex has to work. Be, <laughs> it's gonna be us two. I will take everyone else's interpretations of the cosmology, and then Bang and I are just gonna like criticize all of them. That's what it's gonna be <laughs> ahead of time. That's all it's oh, gonna be. Oh god. Uh. Oh, I mean, if you interpret the um, that one image on the cipher as being a moon, and say that that refers to Moon Knight Asriel, um, then I don't think cosmology matters for that one, does it? I'm going to bring up cosmology anyways, because Moon Knight has Cause some pretty whack cosmological implications. Because of the god thing? It's Khonshu. Yeah, Khonshu is, like, really strong. Wait, and, wait, of wait. course, Moon Knight has that one feat of, like, messing with all the moons in creation and, like, squashing King Thor between them and, like, biting the Phoenix Force. Okay, well, never mind. Which Asriel do you think they'll use? Because I, I distinctly remember not long ago, someone asked that in the Death Battle server, and the big response was, there's multiple Asriels? <laughs> there are. Um, I think it would be Jean. I think it would be Jean. Like, that's, that's the main one. But yeah. everyone always everyone like knows Asriel from the Arkham games, where it's Michael. Yeah. And yeah. ironically, I don't think Michael has the, the famous flaming sword, does he? I actually don't know Azrael like that well. All I know is that he's really strong, and uh, apparently Michael. I'm pretty sure Michael is like the stronger Azrael. I think if he's the one fighting Moon Knight, it might be an Azrael win. If not, then it's it's actually really hard to say because Moon Knight <sighs> Moon Knight has so much random bullshit. Like, he's, if you want to, like, he's, I guess you can say that he's going to be the Ant-Man of the street tiers, because he has so much stuff. Or maybe he's the Batman of street tiers, but with superpowers, because the stuff Moon Knight has genuinely makes me so mad sometimes, because it makes no logical sense. Like, he has, like, 
these like bracelet thingies that can like punch souls. He has. Of course he does. What else does he have? That's like probably the craziest thing he has, but he he has a lot more things. Like he has a replica of Captain America's shield, Spider Man's web shooters, Wolverine's claws. What the fuck is he Taskmaster now? <laughs> I mean, I he's guess they, actually, they look vaguely similar. He actually beat the ever living shit out of Taskmaster, and he's like one of the only superheroes that Taskmaster is like deathly afraid of. I mean, that makes sense. Half the time, whenever I see Taskmaster brought up, it's how he got his ass kicked by this guy and that guy. Oh yeah, Black Widow literally, like, beat Taskmaster recently. Like, she's like, oh, I've been holding back all this time. People <laughs> always- <laughs> Of course she no, has! No, I'm pretty sure Taskmaster, like, freaked out so much, he, like, ran through his database and he's like, I'm gonna start copying the skills of Iron Fist, Captain America, and, like, stack them on top of each other, and she's like- I'm still gonna beat you, and she still did it. Of course, like, Taskmaster is a chronic loser. <laughs> like, he's I guess that also Taskmaster means before, Black but... Widow is, like, one of the most skilled characters in Marvel, because yeah, she directly she fought against him while he was, like, you know. I mean, admittedly, um, had he gotten the full skills of Iron Fist and Cap before she started beating him up, or was he, like, in the middle of it? I... Oh, I read this a long time ago. I think she beat him after he got... Like, after he started using them, and, I mean, obviously if Natasha fought Cap or uh, Iron Fist themselves in a one-on-one, -on -one, <laughs> I don't think she would exactly have won that, but... No, I Task mean, Iron Fist would just punch her. <laughs> Task Taskmaster is weird. He's got the mutant ability yeah. to suck. <laughs> he's he's an interesting one. Uh, okay, cosmology time. What we're all here for. Yeah, so Marvel's like microverse and overspace. Yeah, Marvel. There's three things we want to cover with Marvel. It's the microverse, overspace, and underspace. And also, I guess the macroverse because Marvel has. One of those. Uh, and the super flow, because that's also pretty important. With, uh, I guess, if we were to start out, you have the Marvel multiverse. It's infinite, as we've gone over numerous times before. All of this infinite, like, all of these infinite realities are, he like, held separately by the super flow, which is the space between realities. But... If we want to like complicate this a bit more, and I'm thinking about making a video about each of these like mini sections of the cosmology, their own videos, but the superflow is also this like dream space sort of archetypal realm that sort of bleeds out of the multiverse and like contains all of it at the same time as well. So it's, I would say that it should technically can contain the macroverse on like d different layers but the macroverse is pretty much this infinite uh it's like this infinitely layered structure that views e like the other layer beneath it as a dream so like how would i explain it it's like you have this one reality and it's completely beyond the entire multiverse. It contains the multiverse within it. But then there is, a, like, the next layer is so much more infinite than that multiverse containing layer that it views it as a dream. And then this goes on till its own infinity. And this is contained within the macroverse. And then the macroverse is viewed as completely irrelevant by overspace, which is the realm of the abstract entities, which contains, like, the Living Tribunal, the Seventh Cosmos version of Eternity, uh, Infinity, Master Order, Lord Chaos, Death, all of the entities should be in overspace. And it's a conceptual realm beyond all of these other spaces under it, and uh, you know, 
it's just an abstract realm. And I guess if we were to compare it to DC, I want to say it's similar in function to the sphere of the gods, but from my personal, like, scaling perspective, I would say that Uberspace is actually a lot higher than the sphere of the gods, because going off of what I just said, that the sphere of the gods would be more akin to something like the superflow, which obviously contains the macroverse within it, and the sphere of the gods could also be argued to be layered. So I feel like that's a pretty good distinction, and then the in-universe or in-multiverse version of the superflow would be the bleed, which actually separates different realities, different multiverses in different parts of DC, and similarly this also differentiates different universes, multiverses, megaverses, whatever you want to call it. So it gets pretty cosmic, and then Marvel has this concept called as above as below, so for the macroverse, you have a microverse, which is pretty interesting because Marvel has a history of saying that the microverse, uh, that every atom of the multi, or like every atom of reality in Marvel contains its own cosmos that is itself infinite, which would mean every atom contains an infinite universe within it, and every droplet might contain a, a cosmos, and then this could potentially be layered itself, so you would just have like an infinite number of layers downwards. And then Marvel's sort of like, yeah, no, that's actually not true. The microverse is uh, just sort of this different dimension that ex that exists separately to the physical world, but then it turned out that both of those are true, because there's worlds within worlds, and then there's also worlds beside worlds, and all of this is sort of connected. So. The microverse as a whole is technically all of this stuff. It's a pocket dimension separate from reality that lies underneath reality, but at the same time there's also microverses within, you know, the atoms of reality. And just, it's just really weird to like get, like to think about because the microverse is like smaller than subatomic in a sense. Like the smallest layers of the microverse should be smaller than subatomic. And you also have layers like underspace, which is to the microverse what overspace is to macroverse, to the macroverse. So underspace dimensionally should be on the same level as overspace, but it's also smaller and underneath all of reality, which again should not be something you should be able to normally wrap your mind around even to me it's just what is going on because you know i've been looking at these sorts of things for a while and it's still just it doesn't make any sense but that's what makes it fun uh yeah you're right it doesn't so make any sense. i've had nothing to say this entire time because i'm just i'm just completely lost the acceptance of what i'm hearing just wash over me yeah uh the microverse I would say if I, ha I I don't even know what, where to like tier the microverse. Like, do you think you have an idea of where to put the microverse? Fuck the fine. <laughs> that just Cause... no idea. Does this mean every atom in Marvel is technically universal or multiversal or like like every? Because there there are like universes and multiverses underneath like, the atoms of creation, and then it's sort of like, okay, if we're generous, maybe we can call the microverse, like, high hyperversal, but also the macroverse, you can argue it to, like, be easily outerversal plus, so it's like, if the microverse is similar, maybe it's, like, outerversal, outerversal plus, wherever you think it is, but then, of course, you do have, uh, What's its face? Overspace. Which is... If you would argue that the microverse and macroverse are like outer plus, then overspace would be high outer, and so would underspace. Or it could just be outer plus, it could be outer. It's There's so many different levels to argue these realms at that, you know, it depends on whatever you're comfortable with. And 
I guess for simplicity's sake, we can just leave it at that vague level, because at the end of the day, neither Ant-Man nor Adam actually, like, scale to these realms. So, like, it doesn't matter. Neither of them are, like, actually capable of punching apart the cosmologies of both, you know, franchises. And then if we move on to Adam... Oh, yeah. yeah, you wanted to say something? I was gonna say, if one was to go to a place the other one can't go, could they even do anything at that point? Or would they just have to sh go back down to where the other guy is to be able to fight them at all? That's actually where the interesting ideas come in, because if we use verse equalization, which we would have to in a scenario like that, in DC, when Darkseid fell from the Sphere of the Gods into regular reality, his shadow was collapsing the entire multiverse. So if Adam were to technically die while in overspace, and he fell into reality, would he do the exact same thing as Darkseid? Would he, like, collapse all of reality underneath him? I mean, that's a good question. And would he, or would he just shrink, like, or would he just grow back to his normal size and just and die. be dead? <laughs> well, when Darkseid fell, it was affecting all of reality, like, Superman, the entire Green Lantern Corps... All the heroes were just absolutely fucking themselves up. Which makes sense, because Darkseid as a whole represents a lot more than Ant-Man does, but would the physical effects of his death still be the same? Maybe. Uh, also, I think that's where we sort of get into like the more complicated stuff, because the microverse in DC, it's the foundation of all of reality in DC, like DC's entire multiversal structure, like not the entire map, but it is, it's like clearly the foundation of the entire multiverse. Is it even Potentially a bleed, I'm not sure, because I remember working on this with Bang before he left, but I believe Grant Morrison's DC map states that the microverse technically that the speed force wall is the limit to matter which means everything beyond that is like something else that's not physical matter but i'm not entirely sure if the bleed is actually physical matter if it is based on that statement the uh microverse might make up everything to the edge of the bleed or it could just make up the entire multiverse within the bleed and I don't think there's too much more to cover with DC's microverse, but there is a statement that if the microverse were to like be ruptured, everything above it would also be destroyed Good. because of how crucial it is as a foundation. That's just great. <laughs> so, I mean, <coughs> I guess then the question is, um, how does it supply in the sense of how much can these two shrink? Um, well, as far as shrinking goes, you, like, they can obviously shrink to the size of an atom and smaller, but as far as how small they can go, Ant-Man has been able to shrink into underspace before, which would mean he would be shrinking to sub-conceptual sizes. Because, again, he's shrinking into a plane of existence smaller than the microverse, which already contains entire microscopic universes, realities, multiverses, space-times, whatever you want to consider it. And Ant-Man can shrink way smaller than that. And he's also been able to shrink onto a Beyonder who's been, who fought, like, the Celestials and the Abstract Entities in planes of reality way bigger than the multiverse, like they were literally fighting through creation, destroying the multiverse, destroying universe after universe, uh, it, they were affecting the super flow, and just all of eternity as a whole. So, just on that basis, Ant-Man can definitely shrink to those conceptual sizes, and there's actually a statement where an alternate version of 
Scott Lang, like an alternate reality version of Scott Lang, was able to shrink smaller than a concept to avoid existence erasure that was literally erasing things on a conceptual level. And got shrunk smaller than that. So, like, it verbatim says, I had to shrink smaller than an idea to, uh, you know, survive. What am I even supposed it, to say to that? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. And Ant-Man has also been able to grow into Overspace, so similarly, as small as he's gone, he's also been able to grow that mm. big. So that would mean he's growing bigger than the multiverse. Bigger than, like, the multi-multiverses. Like, all the multiverses, all the megaverses, just into the realm of the abstracts. And he's done this. He's done it casually, like, he just casually grew above all of reality, but he's also been able to grow into overspace mid-fight. But there's actually a risk with that, because if he does that, he puts an excessive amount of strain on his body, and he can only do that for so long before having to shrink, and if he goes above that time limit, he could very easily uh, just sort of die. Yeah, so... That's the extent that Ant-Man's growing and shrinking can go. Whereas Adam has been able to shrink... Let's see. He's been able to... I actually haven't seen this yet. But he's supposedly been able to outshrink an existence erasure wipe from Dr. Manhattan. Who... You know... He's stronger than Mr. Mixy, and he's also one of the most powerful entities in the DC universe, so if he can survive, you know, existence erasure shrink from him, which, or he, if he was able to shrink smaller than the existence erasure, then that would be pretty, I would say that could be argued to be pretty comparable to um, Ant-Man. Scott Lang alternate reality shrinking that small. Which, you know, that's that would mean they should be roughly comparable in shrinking ability. And Ant Man, or not Ant Man, Adam has also been able to shrink small enough to the point where he didn't exist. Or he technically <laughs> wasn't considered to exist. So, like, he can shrink smaller than existence, which. Okay, cool. So, I guess the question I have, what's what exactly is the more impressive thing? Shrinking smaller than existence or shrinking smaller than the erasure of existence? Cuz on the offset they sound fairly similar. I actually I don't know. How does they've... he re-exist him? Does he just naturally by technicality have resistance to existence erasure because when he didn't exist he could just re-exist no because if he actually got hit if either of them got hit by the existence erasure they would have just ceased to exist like genuinely not existed or have ever existed i guess because it was conceptual erasure okay I, 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 if... I should specify not by the things they shrunk away from but like regular ass existence erasure some random anime whatever shown in character Let's say they let's say they got hit by a Hakai. Would they just come back from that? Because that's just regular ass basic bitch existence erasure and they can shrink back from not existing? Well, no, because a Hakai erases your soul across all of time. So technically, while it's not conceptual in the same sense as Marvel or DC, a Hakai would theoretically be like conceptual because the idea of you as defined by your body and your soul and your mind across all of time just Ooh, ceased we, to be are we doing mind body dichotomy now i mean sure let's fucking go love some good old-fashioned mind body dichotomy though that doesn't really matter here so let's not get into it yes <laughs> yeah so um, we've established that stat wise you can fairly argue that they're basically the same, 
and shrinking yes. ability, you can pretty easily argue as well that they're relatively comparable in how small they can get. Yeah. And their advantages beyond that aren't massive game changers for the most part. Well, I think this is where you sort of have to... I guess, as far as size changing goes, the one thing you'd have to take into account is that Ant-Man can grow, whereas Adam cannot. At the same time, that would would make Adam a very difficult target to hit. But that would also make Ant-Man pretty much impossible to affect. Well, it, it, I feel like at that point, you would that not be like some kind of stalemate if Ant Man is so big that Adam couldn't do anything, but Ant Man's also so big that he can't really do anything. Yeah. Could he have just like an army of overspace ants? Could he just like uh-huh. create like billions <laughs> of ants that are all like up there in the realm of? The like eternity, not multi well, eternity, just the seventh cosmos one. With the ants, I don't think they would, they won't, they wouldn't be able to survive up there for too long because they don't have the suit. They're just, it's not even that. It's just Ant Man himself can't stay up there for too long. He will eventually have to shrink back down, and he actually took Absorbing Man up there. Like, he literally made him grow. Like, he forced him to grow. And Absorbing Man lost his mind. Like, Ooh. almost instantly. Like, he just... He went crazy. And the thing is, Hank actually doesn't necessarily have a resistance to that either. But he has a better resistance than a lot of people. He's got a which would, brain. That would beg the question. If he did that to Adam, could he buy enough time where Ray is, like, incapacitated... To where he could just kill him instantly. Yeah, that that was... It's great you mentioned that. I completely forgot. That's a common win condition um, I've seen people bring up for Hank. Is just making Ray lose his fucking mind in overspace. Um, yeah. My question then is, can and Ray not shrink back down? He could, but if he just loses his mind, would he be able to sort of overpower yeah, I, that I long enough to shrink? If it happens instantly... But then, like, if, if, like, if there's no explanation as to how Hank can survive up there without losing his mind so quickly, would it not be reasonable to assume it could just be due to his intelligence? Because it is a mental thing, and I'm not saying Absorbing Man necessarily is dumb as bricks, but he might as well be a brick next to Hank. Arguably, but the weird part is Absorbing Man has, like, absorbed the powers of, like, Odin and, like, the Cosmic Cube in the past, so why would he go insane? Maybe he just can't absorb overspace. Probably. I mean, Eternity is a bit more, you know, up there than Odin is, but, uh, yeah. No, because when Ant-Man took Absorbing Man up there, like, the Living Tribunal was up there. And <laughs> Hank actually did when the when he witnessed the Beyonders fight the Living Tribunal, he actually did lose his mind, or like he had his. his it was brought up that he did have a minor resistance because he was sort of like putting up with it, but eventually he just it was too much for him. Mm. Whereas with Absorbing Man, it was literally instant. He was just like instantly done. And then when Ant Man shrunk back down from overspace during the Absorbing Man instance, it was actually brought up that he was like physically overwhelmed but he was just hanging on by a thread so i think just those few seconds could be enough for hank to spin spin it to his side for the advantage mm. that def- that definitely could be but i mean if he makes ray completely lose his mind hank's won like he's just won at that point because yeah um ray might have all these good counters to a lot of what hank has but if he can't even think to use them um, if even if like they both lost their powers immediately afterwards, um, yeah. you would still have an insane guy who's got no idea what he's doing against the scientist supreme. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's actually uh, what else? I believe I think it's probably safe to bring up weaknesses now because that is a pretty important part. I would assume. Uh. Yeah. 
I noticed one See? weakness for Adam in particular that I know that seemed interesting to me. But yeah, go go ahead. It's the bio belt. He gets most of his shrinking. Like so far, from what I've understood, most of his power comes from the bio belt, and it's possible that he can shrink on his own to a certain degree. But the bio belt is what really gives him that ability to shrink like efficiently like safely efficiently just like to whatever degree and that is technology and as far as i know hank does have an emp i don't know if the bio but i'm sure it could potentially have like you know resistances to that because i would definitely because the bio belt is actually really dangerous to use like improperly and if i was ray if i had ray's intelligence i would have definitely put like a resistance to emps in there because um if the bio belt doesn't use the white dwarf matter properly it can cause people to just explode and die and it can also be hacked or c compromised and it can also be overloaded with enough energy so, uh, that's, that's where all the complicated stuff comes in, because Hank, as Wasp, his suit has, like, stinger blasts that have, like, messed with Ultron's frequencies. I don't know if that's necessarily the same thing, I'm not, like, an electrical engineer, but I feel like, you know, those are the, those might be the things that can definitely impact uh, Ray, because I will admit Hank Pym isn't necessarily the most stable person ever, as a lot of people might know and bring up excessively. Do you but... want to explain the context behind the um the wife slap that people bring up? The wife slap, um, because I know there is like context to it. I believe there is. I haven't gone too much into that, but I think I think Hank was just sort of losing his mind at that time. Um which is obviously not an excuse, but the important bit is that no Hank Pym is not like that nowadays. Yeah. Uh like I'm pretty sure that was literally a one-time thing. And obviously, that's how Ultron sort of came into existence. Like, yeah, Ultron I mean, is that, the that, that's funny. People love to bring up the wife slap. Um, I consider that nothing compared to the fact that he made Ultron. <laughs> Ultron is literally Hank's, like, mind when it goes crazy. So Literally calls Ultron... him father. Like, that's not Ultron wrong, is... but... <laughs> Ultron? Sure. He's bad. He's crazy. He's whatever. Hank right now has... He's fine. Like, he is not that crazy lunatic that you might think of. Like, he's definitely not as stable as Ray, as far as I know, but he's not, like, unstable. So, like, is that really a weakness at that point? Nah, I don't think it's, I don't think it's that big a problem. I feel like... Yeah. Um, hell, if he can go to overspace, which makes you insane, and he not go insane in overspace, I think that should tell you something, probably. Yeah. He's, he's like, gotten past that phase. Yes. To, yeah. Like, eh, it's... And with Hank's growing, there is, you know, a risk, obviously. Like, he also puts his mind and body at risk, but... I feel like, in this sense, it's a lot easier to take advantage of Ray's, like, weaknesses with the bio belt than it is to take advantage of the pin particles. Yeah. And I do think that's a pretty... I think this is one of those situations where Ray just doesn't have as much of an arsenal as Pim does, whereas Pim not only has the arsenal and the numbers advantage but he also has the uh easier like he has the easier method to exploit ray's weakness because yeah, i think they can both shrink each other down but the problem is uh i mean they can both shrink each other down and then undo the like undo it on themselves but uh 
whoever shrunk smaller than the other is obviously at a pretty big like advantage off the bat but if they can like if they like enter each other's bodies and then like enlarge or like shrink the other one then that could definitely be a problem because once you like start messing with like the internal organs i think that's the point at which uh it becomes a bit more dangerous because if ray were to try like that you know size manipulation of like specific body parts on like like if he like enters hank's chest and like tries to enlarge his heart while keeping the rest the same i feel like that could definitely be like a one-shot option that'd be but, fucking nasty <laughs> yeah similarly i think hank if he like enters ray's body and like decides to like bring the ants in there and then he like enlarges the ants inside of race like arteries or something that could that could get pretty messy so i think there's just a lot of different ways these two can just kill each other if they try and if you give hank like his other like technology like the wasp suit janet's stingers i think they are roughly comparable or like Hank's stingers might be roughly comparable to Janet's. And that Janet's stingers sense. are like she's melted Sentry's face off. Excuse me. So <laughs> Yeah no. Wasp literally burnt Sentry's face off. Uh let's just look that up. Lo Wasp burns Sentry's face. I'm sure it will come up. So, do or people generally just... agree that Wasp kicks the shit out of Bumblebee? Um, Bang and I were actually looking into each other like that, and apparently Bumblebee has some good feats of her own, but I do think Wasp is, like, probably superior. Fuck, I guess it's gonna be, like, a similar point to this, where, like, Bumblebee is so under-researched. Yeah. Yeah. But, to that, be that... fair, Bumblebee doesn't have as much stuff as, uh... Oh, yeah. You know. Yeah, definitely not. I think that that's the that's yeah. the line where I'm willing to say that I think, from my knowledge, that Ant Man should win. I believe he probably will, but with how under researched Adam is, it really would not surprise me if there was some stuff that just completely undoes a lot of Hank's advantages. Like randomly in one comic that five people have read, Adam has resisted. Um, going insane, or he has put something in to stop EMPs from fucking with his belt. Uh, which, admittedly, you could also argue that there could just be one random comic where Hank's toolbot brings something in that fucks with technology that does not at all involve EMPs. Um, yeah. And, like, that's my concern, is that with with a lot of the other ones, like with Wanda and Zatanna, uh, people, people love to hype them up a lot. So it's not like they were hugely under researched. Zatanna definitely probably was a little bit in the general community, but it wasn't much. Um, and with Adam Apocalypse, frankly, with Black Adam, there's not <laughs> a huge amount yeah. of stuff beyond his just brute force. Um, yeah. But with this one, Ant Man is pretty researched, but there is definitely a lot missing. And Adam, no one has fucking look into adam before recent times <laughs> yeah jesus so that's that's my concern yeah yeah okay yeah wasp is actually really powerful what the hell what did you find that she fucking punched mjolnir in the face no but she like she outmaneuvered sentry Despite Sentry being faster than her. Yeah, she might as well be able to do that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think... Oh, and she can also grow big, like Ant-Man. And I feel like Wasp also has the ability to shrink smaller yeah. than Bumblebee. Because there's no way Bumblebee has shrunk as small as Adam. Whereas Wasp shrinking as small as uh, Ant-Man. Fairly you know. consistent. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely shouldn't have told people that Wasp can grow giant. I feel like there are some people who did not need to know that information. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
I'm I, I'm like sure there's again. something out there that you know. Yeah. Oh right, right. There's actually a scan where Hank. Wait, let me make sure this is canon because I do not want to like. I think there's like a comic where like Hank specifically like shrinks between like Janet's like boobs or something. <laughs> to be fair, in the Justice League Unlimited TV show for kids, I'm pretty sure Adam's first appearance is shrinking into like Wonder Woman's boobs. Into like her bra or something. And this was like for eight year olds, so I can I can absolutely imagine just in my head Wonder Woman just completely stone faced, just no reaction. I don't think she cared. She I think just, she was just she like... does not have the energy of someone who cares. If he, if he tried that on like Supergirl, maybe there'd be a problem. Um, I mean, there is kind of a problem generally, but I, Wonder Woman seems like the kind of person to just take it and just be like, sure. <laughs> well, like, if... To be fair, if she ever got mad at Adam, she could just, like, crush him. You... <laughs> There are some people who did not need to know that too. <laughs> <laughs> so like Wonder Woman's like one of the, the nicest people. Um, sometimes. Sometimes guess, yeah, that depends. Like sometimes she's like a beacon of like compassion and kindness, and other times, she'll fucking maul you. But you know, yeah. generally, you know, she's friends with Adam. She'd take it in stride. She'd be like, yeah, now get the hell out of there. And yeah. he'd probably listen. <laughs> I mean, Ray's a good guy. I feel like he would listen. Yeah. I mean, none of them are... Fuck, what's his name? Like, that one Ant-Man. Like, the really scummy one. I don't even know. I forget his... The, the one two. with the, the shower scene is the one I'm thinking of. Oh. Uh. His name. Is I his name is slipping. Lost. I'm just gonna look it up because he people shit on Hank for being an asshole. Hank he's not is not. One. He's not the one you should be shitting on. Yeah, Hank is not. This this is the one who's really scummy. Hank um, is not that bad. No. He is a loving wife, usually, most of the time. Mm-hmm. Here we go. Okay, well, Google's telling me that Stan Lee is Ant-Man, and that does not seem right to me. <laughs> okay, here is the Sentry scan. I finally found it. It's pretty gruesome. Ah, Eric O'Grady. That's that's the Ant-Man I'm thinking of. Yes, that is him. That's Sentry. Yeah. <laughs> what hits her in the back of the head? Is that the thing? No, it's a random rock monster. Why why is its fucking legs so massive in the subsequent panels? But there it's like a, a like a human size. Well not human size, but like a not Unrealistic oh, I'm pretty sure Wasp, like, grew, and then she got hit on the head, and then she f shrunk. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I can see it. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Fucking and... shoot Sentry in the face, and he's... He takes it. Of course he takes it. It's Sentry. He doesn't give a shit. He can fucking vaporize him, and he'd, he'd just be like, well, that was a bit rude. Or yeah, he literally says face. it that. Yeah. I mean, Sentry literally got erased from existence, and then he came back, and then he's like, hi. Yeah. So, okay, Sentry ripping his own head off to just be a brain is kind of silly, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> he's under the control of the Death Seed in that one. Oh, I thought no. I thought this was something Void-related, but okay. No, that, that is Death Seed Sentry. Does Sentry ever get, like good things happening to him? Maybe in his own run. 
Like, I feel Probably like every time I see Sentry, he's either doing something really cool, and then yeah. that's his whole addition, is he does one cool thing, or everything's going wrong for him. <laughs> he's just strong. He's a strong guy that nothing goes right for. He's like Peter Parker, but way stronger. Like, he got murdered by Null. Oh, did you know that Null is apparently an anti-Beyonder? What? <laughs> like, anti of the Beyonder, or anti of the Beyonders? Like, all the Beyonders, like, that race, like, Null is the opposite of them. Like, uh, you know how Null is called the King in Black? Yeah. I'm pretty sure, I think, uh... You know, I should just go to the comic. It was in the most recent Venom issue, but the Beyonders, I think they're also called, like, the Kings in White. What are they doing over at Marvel? What are they doing? You know, it's really cool, because it's all written by Al Ewing, so it all connects together in, like, this massive cosmological thing. Wait, but that's, that's how you yeah. pronounce his name? Al Ewing? Huh. I think so. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, how are things going for Peter? I honestly don't even know. I haven't touched a Spider-Man comic in a while, but according to Lunge, he hates everything, so... I, I, all I, don't I think... see related to Marvel Comics on Twitter is people going, Hey, you know how Peter could sometimes have a good ending? Me neither! And just everything going <laughs> wrong for him. I don't think anything's ever gone right with Peter. There's a reason he's called Peter Parker and not Peter Parked, because he's always trying to find that parking spot, because nothing ever goes right for him, not even the smallest thing. And the funniest part is, he's literally met the one above all. <laughs> he's met God! Yeah. You know, the one thing he should have asked there is, hey, why do you fucking hate me? <laughs> he actually did, he asked... Really? Like, he asked the one above all, why do I, like, you know... Why am I the one that suffers? Why do I go through all of this? <laughs> I really... I know that's... I know he didn't say this, but I really hope the one above all just said cope. <laughs> the one above all was just like, have faith. Bye. <laughs> okay, he basically did just say, cope, bitch. <laughs> no, yeah, no, the one above all was like, it's fine, you'll figure it out. What a dick. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, did the one above all really ever help anyone i mean no but like when i think of like this like the like dc's version of the one above all when i think of the presence i think about him like you know he did a lot of things that might not have been great but in the end he like really did want to help lucifer right that's what i think well, of with the presence the one above all did help like a few people but like with Spider-Man, you know, Spider-Man had to go through whatever he did. And, to be fair, Hulk also asked the one above all why, like, he was suffering so much. And then the one above all was like, because you're strong enough to, sort of. He was just like, because you're my son. Which like, I created me, you. To me, translates as tough shit. <laughs> It's, I mean, it's sort of like the question, why does suffering exist? And it's like, the one above all is like, in Marvel, you have like every religion, right? Yeah. And every religion is a facet of the one above all. Like, Loki visited the House of Ideas, and then he was literally told, you are as, like, you are a god, right? But yeah. in the end... You're just a reflection of, like, the one above all. Like, you are just an aspect of him, per se. Because, like, every god in reality is just, like, a smaller and smaller piece of the one above all. So, technically, you're not supposed to worship the one above all. You are supposed to worship your own gods that, like, sort of reflect through the one above all. So, like, it's like, if you pray to Thor, has Thor ever helped people? Well, yeah, obviously. But, you know... It's complicated. It's a mess. It's nothing. Just nothing. Me that, um, if Loki versus Kafka happens, cosmology that we don't need is going to be brought up in the video. Yeah. 
Because, like, Kevka's fucking planet level, <laughs> at best, to my knowledge. And then Loki, at worst, is, like... Universal. You can literally, you can literally use regular Loki, and he would win. Yeah, like, regular Loki would, would slaughter. Like, even if you used Dissidia, and you were to believe that Dissidia is multi-plus, uh, Loki would still win. He's Even if he was yeah. universal, he's just so fast, and his hacks so far up the ass. Don't matter. <laughs> Loki's, Loki's hacks is literally on par with, like, Doctor Strange at yeah, a certain point. Which makes sense, because yeah. he, he should be. But yeah, oh, that, that's gonna be a lovely one when that happens. Yes, like I'm gonna be really happy to get a, a Final Fantasy character not from Seven, um, and he's just gonna yeah. fucking die. Yep. Oh, well, now that we're almost done, we might as well just bring up these really funny scams that I know people are gonna want. Uh, that one for Adam. And then? Oh, yeah. The fucking... The fucking... This... <laughs> Adam bounces around. <laughs> oh, but here's the thing. Ant-Man has also done that. Oh, well, oh that's what that is. Done. So, you, yeah. I mean, you can literally... Um, just use these feats and say, There, speed's equal, cunt. <laughs> They're both... Yeah, it's, they can shrink small enough to become living quanta, where they're in a state of, like, infinite possibility and, like, pseudo-omnipresence. So I guess if if you were to ask the question, how fast can they both shrink? Doesn't matter, because at a certain point, they'll be so small that speed just will not exist. Don't oh, matter. apparently this is how fast light is when you're that small. Like, this is apparently the speed of light. Like, literal just light speed at a certain size. Which... Mm. Okay. This is... This is bad. That's, that's all. This is, quant this is quantum physics, and I don't know how quantum physics works. So... Any, any like, last words? That sounded like a threat. <laughs> any, any last things to say on the matchup and what you think? Not really at this point. Like, I, I don't even know what to say. Like, I, I think Ant-Man wins. Just From my limited oh. knowledge, I, I... I do think Hank wins. I, there is a part of me that hope... Ray wins because a lot of people have been shitting on him. Um, I mean, I I do like Hank Who's more. Been shitting on Ray. This I've just seen a lot of people be like, "Oh, Ray sucks." Like there are definitely people, there are people memeing it, which that's that's perfectly okay. It was just a meme, but I have seen like people genuinely like just hate yeah. on Ray, like as a character, because he's lame. Look at his suit. Um, and there is I like I like his suit. What? There's, like, that divide between people who are genuinely, like, like, people who are just joking that he's lame, and people who hear that joke and go, ah, he is lame, yeah, and go What's with it. What's wrong with the suit? I mean, I guess it looks dorky from the wrong angle, I guess. I don't know. It's fine. It's a fight. I, I like, um, the way his shrinking looks a lot more with, like, the... Oh, yeah, I, I prefer sure. the... The atomic particles swirling around him over just here's some uh, an outline. Yeah, 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 for sure. Also, Ant I I like Ant Man's MCU costume. I don't really like his comic costume as much. Right, yeah. If we're talking about stupid suits, look at Ant Man's fucking hat. <laughs> his helmet is pretty bad. <laughs> it's funny. It's charming in like that old comic way, but it, it's 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 pretty stupid. It's pretty bad. Yeah. I think the only time it looks good is um, in the Lego games. I think it looks pretty good because it's like a nice chromed piece that um, looks really interesting. Um, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I do like Hank more, mostly because of um, EMH. Uh, yeah, because I'm not experienced too many of their comics, so it's it's between EMH, Hank, and Legends of Tomorrow, Ray, um, and ignoring. The obvious fact that Earth's Mightiest Heroes is better than the entire CW. 
Um, I yeah. well, except except Superman and Lois, if you count that. I love Superman and Lois, but uh-huh. that that barely counts uh, as CW. But I just I like Hank more in EMH than I like Ray in Legends of Tomorrow, especially because Ray sort of got worse as time went on. Yeah. He's not really as notable as, you know, Hank and Janet are due to yeah. as many heroes. Yeah, especially because, like, by, there comes a certain point where he's just not in the show anymore. Yeah. I also think that Hank might be able to just mess with Ray's power source, because there's a feat that I didn't bring up, but in an alternate universe, because of course it's an alternate universe, a different version of uh, Ant-Man was able to use the Pym Particles to, sh- to like, mess with an omniversal tornado energy thing that Doom siphoned to, like, overwhelm Doom and then turn him into stone. I don't... That was a bit more conceptual, but, like, you know. I think in this context, Hank could definitely use his shrinking to mess with yeah. Ray as he's shrinking, and that can do quite a bit I, with I do, damage, especially I, with Bio Belt. Yeah, I think the bio belt is what probably sways me, um, and that's why I'm very hesitant on like locking in. Oh, for certain, Ant Man's gonna win, is because yeah, the the bio belt is like the big weakness I see. But I also can very much imagine that all the stuff Hank could do is stuff that Ray has resisted in some comic out there. Yeah, and that's but I also feel like the other way is also true because like. You have Ray being able to just, like, blow stuff up by shrinking them, but then if that's, like, a property of uh, white dwarf matter, like, using that to shrink, uh, Hank has pin particles, which don't have a weakness, so would they technically protect Hank from, like, shrinking? I guess that's a good or, question, like, like, if... Whatever, yeah. Can the, he, he probably has some... Showing some resistance to the effects that um, White Dwarf Matter has dished out. I also wouldn't yeah. be super shocked if there's a comic where Ray is like, Oh, as it turns out, I actually have absorbed enough of it into me that I don't need the belt. I just use it for control, but I still have the same power without it. That would oh, for shock sure. I, Not counting I don't them fully zero know. Out. I don't fully know if can like actually use it to kill Ray. I mean, it's possible with the knowledge I have right now, it's definitely viable, but he can definitely there's like three different ways to exploit the bio belt that Hank could that I could think hmm. of. I'm sure Hank could think, of, could more, think of more. Especially yeah. with his nine hundred pieces of technology he carries on him yeah. at all times. But oh, uh, um, who's the better fighter? Like, just as a random aside, a tertiary everything, who's like more skilled? Hand to hand, I'm actually not sure what feats they have, but I feel like. Uh, to my knowledge, know. uh, Ray has trained with Batman, because of course he yeah. has. I'm sh- I'm sure he has, but at the same time, wouldn't Hank have trained with like? Yeah, he could train with Cap. For all yeah, him. and that that would like equal out, like, because obviously hmm. neither of them are like masters of like a million forms of martial arts, but if either of us were to, like, go up and try to fight them one-on-one, I don't think we would win, so... Well, no, they just shrink, <laughs> but... Well, no, like, in a hand-to-hand yeah. fight. Um, yeah. But, like, because like, I guess, like, there's go- there might be an argument started of who's a better fire between Batman and Cap. Literally doesn't matter. Um, if they train with them, it doesn't matter because they're not going to be nearly as skilled as the guys themselves. Yeah. So, it's just going to be a matter of they've had got the training. And Batman and Cap are pretty much equals anyway, so, like... Uh, but Batman, you know, he's, like, is master of every martial art, while, like, Cap is just a boxer. Have you not watched Batman vs. Captain America? Oh, yeah. Such a good episode. I forgot, yeah. (laughs) I fucking love that! Like, Boomstick's like, I I bet you didn't know that Captain America was also a ninja! And then, in the end, it's like, Wiz is like, but Batman's more than a boxer. I I just want Cap to come back so he can be better represented. I'd like that, yeah. Yeah. If, like, this time I need him to, like, actually be, like, a badass. Like, actually be Captain America and not an idiot who throws his shield into the dense fog with no idea where it's gonna bounce off when that's, like, his whole fucking shtick. <laughs> and the, ha- the sad part is I don't think there's any fights that Cap would win if he were to come back. 
I, I think depending on how you buy speed, he might be able to beat Guile. Oh yeah, Guile, he might beat Guile. I think uh, Kamen Rider smacks him, but can't get past the shield. He just It's and then, just a matter of speed. He can't break the shield, obviously. Um, and Cap versus Deathstroke is definitely debatable, but... Yeah, yeah. That, 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 that's the one I feel like is the debatable one. Um, Guile could be debatable, yeah. but I think I think if you consider Street Fighter like way faster than light, then Cap is fucked. But if you mm -hmm. just put them at like relativistic, Cap just bashes him with the shield over and over again. Yeah. Yeah. So Cap's also a way better fighter than Guile, I think. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not entirely sure about Street Fighter. They could secretly have something, but well, Guile is very skilled, but he's skilled in like. Maybe a couple forms of martial arts. Cap is good at fucking everything. As in, like, yeah. fucking for emphasis, not literally fucking everything. Um, he's, he's not, <laughs> he's not Constantine. Um, but he's, he's probably more skilled. Um, Guile's advantage is, I think, physically, he's way stronger. Um, yeah. Knock hand the shield, and he's got more ranged options, because he can spam sonic booms while Cap can throw his shield once, wait for it to come back, and throw it again. Yeah. But, yeah. And then Deathstroke, I think, is the closest one because they're very similar in stats um, and skill. And then I think Deathstroke has the better arsenal, but like Cap is like more experienced in a sense, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. It's the shield just sort of is better than like anything Deathstroke has, but like Deathstroke has way more things that. Mm could kill Cap if they were to bypass the shield. Deathstroke can throw a lot of shit out that Cap isn't going to be able to block all at once. Yeah. But, like, that is also, like, the one that I want the least, is Deathstroke versus Captain America. Yeah. It'd be cool as, like, a prediction blog on, like, G1, though. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'd, I think, I'd read that. <laughs> I think Cap, surprisingly, might have the better adaption. Like, Cap's adaption like people are like oh the super soldier serum just like gave him better stats no it gave him a variety of powers as well like his adaptive ability he can like adapt to like martial arts that take like decades to master in like literal minutes like he can pull a taskmaster and just keep on going yeah the difference like, he can is that cap, will, cap actually has a good chance of winning <laughs> yeah with Taskmaster, it's like he can skill stack against Deathstroke, but his other stuff isn't as good. And obviously yeah, Cap Shield is I a really, big advantage. I honestly just... think Taskmaster is just be fucked against Deathstroke. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't really know who else Taskmaster can fight, but I'm also like not really cramming for Taskmaster in Death Battle, honestly. I don't really care if he gets in or not. Right now, the only ones... Right now, I am not in a state where I want a bunch of street tier fights, because those get insanely toxic, surprisingly, but, you know. Yeah, I have noticed that, it, that which is weird. Yeah. It's going to be it's great weird. when one of the most toxic fights is going to be fucking Catwoman versus Black Cat. <laughs> okay, that one's not toxic. I'm pretty sure that one's, like, relatively clear-cut. I mean, I've I seen think... a lot of people, unironically, bring up the Flash feat and be like, nah, like, genuinely this is a legitimate feat and catwoman destroys black cat because she's a herald tier and well if you want to bring up herald tier stuff well at one point black cat got a staff like that was made out of an yggdrasil root that like gave her magic powers comparable to like i don't know a random sorceress supreme so yeah i mean that's, that. that's that's an arsenal thing though yeah, Black Cat already actually has superpowers. Catwoman. That does is true. Not. <laughs> that could already affect Catwoman pretty significantly. I mean, I I already think Black Cat kind of just spanks. To be honest, uh -huh. I don't think Catwoman's got a ghost of a chance. And the fact that Black Cat's actually got powers that aren't shit as well, pretty decent. I, the other street tier fights are pretty close as well. Like Bull Bullseye versus Deadshot is super close. Yep, I'm a Mysterio vs. Scarecrow goes all over the that place. One's pretty close. Yeah, that one's pretty close as well. Uh, Clayface vs. Sandman. 
that one's also close. It's like stats barely matter for that one because they're yeah. If one of them punches that the one... other to nothing, they'll just be fine. Yeah. And then, how many more do we have, street tier wise? Well, as we mentioned earlier, there's Azrael versus Moon Knight. That one is close. Yeah. I definitely think it's gotta be Jean, of the Azrael's they go with, because I'm thinking about it, Michael's never been Batman, and that's a big part of the theming. Michael was, yeah. um, uh, Bat-Devil. Which is a totally different thing. Oh, uh, X-23 versus Cassandra Cain. That's a thing? That is a thing. That's a pretty popular thing too. Huh. I've not. I've not really noticed that one too much. Yeah. X twenty three's got adamantium, it's right? Or has she not got it? She has adamantium claws and adamantium foot claws, but, but not, not an adamantium skeleton. But her regeneration is better than Wolverine's because she doesn't have to deal with the adamantium yeah, poison. It's not poisoned. I mean, yeah. probably, I mean, you know, it's probably a little bit, but not nearly as much. I think you could definitely argue for a Cassandra Kane win if it's just in cap strictly because she's way better than like literally pretty much any other I, street here in DC. But I love that through the lens of versus debating, Cassandra Kane seems like the lamest character of all time. Because if you don't but know, she's like, like I've heard she's a great character, and I don't disagree. Yeah. I think that's very I, that probably is. But when you only hear about her from versus debating, she sounds like an OC. This is a a woman who could beat up the entire Bat family at the same time and barely break a sweat. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like just an OC made to be OP. But, like, if you think about it logically, I don't think she would beat X-23. Especially not in, like, a death battle setting, because, like, how is she going to kill X-23? Yeah, the, the, regen, the regen thing comes to mind. Like, even if she had a bunch of good options to take X-23 out, I think X-23's option of just slice her fucking throat out would be better. Yeah. Uh, and upscaling like, from Batman is not going to be as good as Adamantium existing. And also with uh, uh, Wolverine's regeneration, like, I know it can be a bit inconsistent at times, but if you look at it at its best, which is what you're technically supposed to do, and there's quite a few instances of it at its best, but it's not like it's a consistency problem. I think he'd be able to, like, recover from, like, I don't know, like, pressure points or, like, nerve shocks, stuff like mm. that. Yeah. The man's straight up regenerated from what, like, nuclear explosions, he, having he his organs reduced to just, out. to just a skeleton, and it was fine. Yeah. Which, admittedly, you, X-23 probably can't do that, because her skeleton would be destroyed, probably? Yeah. Um, unless the but, unless she has matter inside of her claws, and she can come back from that, but that, that feels like a stretch. But her regeneration's also better than Wolverine's, we just don't know to what extent, yeah. so... I've, I've always actually wondered, yeah. would decapitation actually kill Wolverine if he survived... With just a skeleton, meaning his brain was probably obliterated in that? Well, Wolverine, there's like a really good scientific explanation to it. Uh, he can survive cutting off his head or trying to drown him is actually, it will kill him, but it'll take a while, so he will feel every single bit of it. Yeah, the drowning is definitely a way to kill him, and that's horrifying. Like his brain... His brain will regenerate itself until all the other organs are... Like, how would I explain it? When he's drowning, his lungs fill with water, and then uh, his oxygen level, like, then he can't breathe, right? So his blood can't, yeah. like, transfer, like, it can't transport the oxygen to his brain. So his brain starts to shut down, and then his heart is, like, dying as well, because the brain can't send signals to the heart, and then the brain is, like, trying to take over everything, but it can't. So it'll take, like, hours and hours, but it will kill him. And he yeah, will feel all of it. And he can't swim because he's fucking heavy. He it, it it's hard for him to swim, yeah, so he's okay, just gonna... does, does Wolverine versus Bigby Wolf count as a street tier match? It's I know it's not Marvel DC, but I mean actually it, I it think is it does. technically. Does, does Wolverine win that? I have no idea. I think he does because like Bigby's Wolver uh, regeneration shits on Wolverines in the long term. But I think in the short term, 
Um, if he gets just like shredded to bits, that'll do him in. I think speed is the problem because how how good is Big B's regeneration? I think he got completely reduced to nothingness and he just came back eventually. Oh, yeah, that's what I've heard. I think his eventually, big wing yeah. condition is to create a vacuum by because he's the big bad wolf. If he huffs and puffs and creates a vacuum with no oxygen, that would yeah. eventually kill Logan. Yeah, but, but that's a pretty that would be hard. That's a pretty weird win con compared to yeah. shred him to bits and just he won't come back for a while. People people keep suggesting that Wolverine can just drown in his own blood if you like try to like strangle him and then like force his like if you like force him to like bleed into his like lungs, but like A his wounds are gonna heal pretty quickly. B he can cough that blood back up. C a bit of blood in his lungs is not gonna kill him forever. Because he's just gonna regenerate. And D, he's gonna be fucking impaling you repeatedly with big fucking claws. If, if <laughs> and, you're... He's, and you're probably gonna piss him off. Yeah, he's gonna get go all berserker. So yeah. if you are in a state where you can just tank repeated hits from his claws, you don't need to worry about needing to strangle him. You could probably just break the adamantium at that point. But those claws can also stab right through the Hulk, so... Yeah, you need to be pretty fucking strong. Which, at that point, why are you putting Wolverine against someone stronger than Adamantium? That's... That's... That's pretty fucky. <laughs> yeah. Wolverine's not a weak guy. I've, I've seen him, like, lift and throw an entire elevator full of people once. But he's... Don't... You don't put him, like... Like, Wolverine versus Lobo... I've seen. It's funny. I like it as a DBX, maybe. But... If it was an actual comic, Wolverine would actually, like, be doing pretty good work. Oh, yeah, I think, like, in even in, like, a, a general fight, if you ignore the speed gap, Wolverine isn't totally fucked, but he is also totally yeah. fucked. He's gonna lose. He can't kill Lobo, really. Um, and Lobo is so strong. Like, he's gonna get some hits on Lobo, I think, because Lobo fights, like, and... I don't even know. I feel Lobo's like Lobo like would so let him. Smart. Lobo would let him get some hits in. Honestly. Lobo would let him. Like, Lobo is so smart, but sometimes he just fights like a dumbass, and I feel like Wolverine's gonna, like, stab him a few times. Yeah. And then Lobo's just gonna, like, punch him into orbit, and then be like, stay there. Yeah, I mean, I would I would love a comic just about those two meeting, because that sounds like it'd be mm -hmm. fucking hilarious. I feel like they would just, like, go to a bar and, like, relax. I, th I think in the Marvel vs. DC comic, it was Wolverine vs. Lobo, and they did just jump behind the bar, and the fight just happened off-panel. Yeah. Just behind the bar, which is funny, but I want to see a proper fight. That would probably be exceedingly graphic, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, that, <laughs> that would be not safe for life. That would be nasty. Lobo vs. Juggernaut is also, like, pretty popular. Which is definitely a lot more fair. Yeah, I, I can see that. But also, I don't think Lobo would even be able to hurt Juggernaut, and then Juggernaut would just, like, keep getting pissed that, like, he can't kill Lobo forever. Yeah. I think the only thing you could argue is the one time Lobo killed a bunch of, like, fifth dimensional imps, which mm -hmm. feels like a huge outlier. Um, it, yeah. If you went with just that, then he could probably do some damage to how to Juggernaut, like how strong Juggernaut is normally. But yeah, I guess the meme argument would be that he takes Juggernaut's helmet off. But that's I feel that's done to God not be as easy as it seems. <laughs> it's not, and yeah, Otherwise, there's also Lobo versus Hulk, which I don't know how that one would go. That one. I mean, it sounds like... It, Lobo has a lot of things that sound like they'd be cool fights. At the same time, I'm not really dying for Lobo to come back, if I'm being honest. I... Yeah. Ghost Rider, definitely, Hulk? I would be okay with, because it yeah. feels Sorry. like Ghost Rider could have done a lot more in that fight. Lobo did a lot of the stuff he tends to do. And Ghost Rider versus Lobo, it's like... It looks like a super close fight on paper, and to a certain degree it is, but the moment Xerathos comes out, it's like, it just ends. Yeah, if there. you took out Xerathos, it would probably be a fairly close fight, maybe yeah. even leaning slightly to Lobo, but you put yeah. Xerathos in, you're a douche. I mean, you can't avoid it. 
You can't avoid it yeah. with Ghost Rider. Yeah. At least with, with, with Johnny Blaze, you can't avoid it. He's going to kill Spawn, I think, just as quick. Actually, no, Spawn has more hacks than Lobo, so he might last a bit longer. But against Zarathos, ultimately, it's going to... It's not... None of it's going to help. Yeah, it, it'll also depend on what level they give Spawn. If they if they oh, go yeah. to, like, the absolute highest, like, with the power of the Mother of Existence, then he could um, die, but it's like, it'll take a bit longer. It would definitely <laughs> be better than Lobo. Yeah, but if you just give him, to, like, Hell King, I think his stats are multi-plus and a bit slower than Lobo, and Lobo can pretty easily be argued to multi-plus just because he's a very fucking strong herald. Yeah. In which case, um, Lobo's harder to kill, I think, than Spawn. Well, I think Spawn has more hacks that, like, oh, yeah. might work. At the same time, yeah. like, I guess taking longer to kill doesn't matter because the pen and stay will just fuck, him, fuck either of them up pretty bad. Mm-hmm. Well, could Spawn technically resist the stare? I think, like, if it's possible, but would you be shocked if Ghost Rider has just completely negated a resistance to your soul being destroyed? Oh, no, he has. He has. So, like, He's yeah, I, I feel like that's the point where it's going to be like, ah, I can resist you destroying my soul, and Ghost Rider can say, no, you can't, and then just win. Yeah. I think there's, like, various versions of, like, Penance Stare is, like... There's, like, a Damnation Stare as well. Of course Something like is. that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. There's... Yeah. I can't... I, I can't think of many other street team matchups. Right now. I know there's a few Cosmic matchups that are probably gonna happen, like Dormammu versus Trigon. Dormammu or, Trigon has a good chance. One thing Probably Raven, Raven versus Phoenix, which... Uh, I'm not excited about that one either, but... <laughs> no. I mean, there yeah. is... It's not a huge possibility, but there is the unfortunate possibility of Lucifer Morningstar featuring the Beyonder. I would actually be pretty excited for that, but, like... <sighs> it's it, not it, a death battle work... It's not something that would work in a death battle. It has its appeal, but how do you visualize yeah. that fight? Exactly. It would just look so much less impressive than it is, and the dialogue could be neat, but it also depends on which Beyonder they go with. If they just go with the childish kind of Beyonder, that's going to be really lame. The Beyonder, I think, is going to like get even more powerful, so it might even out, but we're going to... I think we just have to wait and see how Marvel looks at him. Hmm. I just... Because he, like unretconned himself and then like grew beyond all the retcons yeah but I mean right you just reminded me that there are like people who go on about our pre-retcon beyonder shits on the one above all and like that's all I can think about now <laughs> he was literally contained by the house of ideas well actually he escaped <laughs> the house of ideas but we don't know where he went it, it, it he had to escape it that, that should say something he had to escape it he couldn't just ignore it the way he ignores everything yeah. else yeah it's also also it makes no sense because apparently the phoenix force is way more powerful than the beyonder now and it's literally nothing compared to the one above all so anything being stronger than the one above all is stupid yeah because at that point nothing matters when you got something stronger than the one above all. Like, yeah. you've reached the end. That's where it should stay. Mm hmm. Someone's gonna bring up the fucking regulators now. Those. That was an aspect of the one above all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, we've, we've successfully managed to go way off course for a solid 30 odd minutes there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um,. And I, we, we've answered the topic. We yeah. We think Ant-Man wins. Yes. But it is possible that there is something with Ray that has not been researched that... That could flip. Yeah. Flip it in his favor. And at the same time, there is also a possibility that Ant-Man has stuff that will solidify his win better. Yes. So. That we also didn't, you know, cover. Yep. So. 
Yeah. So, both of these are... They're both super under-researched, so... Definitely. I, I will link the G1 blog when it comes out in the description. Yeah. Because um, it'll that definitely be more detailed. Lot more. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and yes. I won't be involved on it, obviously, but I am 100% certain you will be. Um, yes. I would be insulted if you weren't. <laughs> <laughs> I will definitely be involved in that one. Yep. So, yep. Uh, can't wait to see it. It'll be quite an interesting read, I imagine. Um, as for now, I'll let you say what you want to end off the video. I really don't have much to say. I guess just be on the lookout for the vlog whenever it comes out and uh, give it a read. Fair enough. And I'll see yep. you guys for the next video. Thank you for joining me Akil again it was it was a fun yeah. time as usual no problem it was great and uh as usual have, yeah <laughs> have a good one guys you'll see me next video